everybody. Welcome to Stock Radio, Stocks on the Move for another week. Today is dated the 23rd of February 2023. Um, my name is Richard Lee and I manage the stockradio.com.au website for you. Okay, interesting times at the moment. We're looking at some bull trades at the moment that have gone really well uh, during this reporting season. Uh, we've seen some, some other ugly ones, which we'll go through a bit later on. Um, the market's at a high, which is making it a bit difficult. People are a bit wary at the moment, but there are some certain stocks going well, so keeping that specific stock approach is always uh, the best for that. Okay, so first we'll go into the top 10. Um, this week, top 10 and intensity ratings from last Friday. Borrow BSL, QBE, which has gone through a bit of a rocket this week. Uh, SDEF, uh, Stanmore, Super Cheap, uh, Super Retail Group these days is going well. Um, so seven group West Farmers A2M we'll look at a bit later on bad uh, bad reaction to the profit report there and then Altium also is holding in there for the moment a little bit whippy that one there so that's the top ten at the moment don't forget to check out all our um, stock picks stops reversals exits entries all in stock all in stock radars trading center for you to have a look at uh, this week in trading tactics I'll talk a, bit, a little bit about bull trades um, you know some of these stocks have moved off pretty quickly um, and uh, some of them have been in uptrends and uh, so we'll just have a little bit of a look at that because it's important to get onto those and it's all part of the game the reporting season's creating a bit of volatility but it's also been up as well as down so the same rules still apply okay anyway let's get uh, firstly uh, into the um, into the markets looking at the Dow Jones Industrial Average it looks very much like our market it's uh, had a bit of a struggle for the moment uh, at these highs here we've got this similar pattern over here um, so we says this wall is still there and we've got to watch it uh, and the market rate strong into here but it certainly hit that wall pretty hard and stopped so a little bit of volume here um, it's really over to the buyers now to see if we can get this down back on its feet again so we'll um, We'll just monitor that one closely for you. The S&P 500 again, it's had a little bit of a dip here. Let me just blow that up a little bit. Um, had a little bit of a dip, um, but you know, it still looks okay. We've had a pretty good move from the lows here. It's been a good volume, a bit of sellings appearing, which is fair enough. Um, so, you know, I'm not too concerned about what's been going on there for the moment. It looks okay to me. Okay, the NASDAQ, again, similar picture. It's rallied off the lows, done pretty well. We've had a bit of a bump back, but again, we'll see what happens with the buyers, see if they can hold it. The market's encouraging, the volume's been good on the upside. This is the downside pressure's easing. It looks like it's a turning pattern happening here. It may not take off just at the moment, but um, it's looking a lot better than it has been for a while. Gold, well, it's shying away from its highs at the moment. Finding it pretty difficult up around that uh, $1,952,000 US dollar area. And the sellers are certainly coming out now and pushing this market down. So uh, where if gold, copper on the other hand is trying the, trying the upside. We've got a good little point of focus line across here, um, which is about at four. Uh, $4. So that sort of you know, has been holding it up and resisting a bit here. Again, we're finding a bit of support here now. So we might see a little bit of a move on that one, which might be interesting. So uh, copper's okay. We've had the selling here, which is okay. It's still holding up pretty well, and the buyers have come back in. This is positive. So things are pretty positive for copper at the moment. And Brent crude, well, it's still going down. Um, you know, it's struggling to make any inroads on the upside. It's got its uh, moving average above at the, um, the downtrend line here. And the only thing we've got a bit of support here, so you know, there's a bit of a battle going on, a bit of volume there, momentum's still negative, and the trend is clearly still down with lower highs and lower lows. Okay, so that's what Brent crude looks like. Okay, now to our market, yes, AS, uh, the ASX 200. Again, um, we've hit this wall which we're struggling to get through at the moment. Uh, around 7629 we really did get to the highs pretty well we've come back nothing too significant the momentum index is still positive um, yeah, there's some support down here below so we can still have some more downside and, and the market will be okay so um, you know it's been weighed a little bit on by sort of BHP, CBA, Telstra they're sort of going sort of sideways at the moment and uh, that's sort of a fairly heavy weight on the index so again looking at those for stock specific situations is really where you should be Okay, so now let's just go to um, look at the stock picks. Okay, it's flat this week at 59. It was two in, two out. Uh, so 57 stock picks at 162, which is better. And two ETFs of 21 there. Portfolios are fairly stagnant, a little bit easing, a little bit here. Um, the Energizer is still doing pretty well at 17 and a half. And the two more recent ones, um, sorry, the 10 stock is at 13.1 still and the two more recent ones are still holding their, pretty, holding their own pretty well in this tough market. Uh, now the one that stuck at August 20 is at 10.9 
and March 21 is at 8.1, so still pretty good returns there. Okay, so now um, we'll go to some stocks, and just to covering off on a couple of leaders, uh, BHP, as we can see, I'll have to just review this one for you. Um, you know, it's broken to the highs, it's just sort of eased back, there's no real aggressive selling hitting there. If I just blow this body up a little bit for you, you can see it's, it's you know, there's plenty of green bars here, put it that way, and the market's been going up, so that's a good side. Trend intensity rating is 8, so that's a pretty positive sign, and it is holding above resistance for the moment, so that's good. So it's one of those situations where patience is, uh, is important, so um, BHP looks okay. The other one I wanted to look at was QBE, which is actually one of our little bullet trades, if you want to call it. Um, it's had a good, um, a bit long consolidation there for a while, um, QBE. Um, let me just get this in the right spot. Okay, QBE sort of had a, had a long consolidation here between uh, mid uh, mid 21 through the end of 23. It's now broken higher, and now the buyers are really getting on board here. A bit of volume is appearing, momentum's good. It's above the average, trend intensity rating of 10. I think the ultimate high is up around 1750. Uh, so we're not that far away from that, but this is a fairly good sign here. We're pushing through there. So if we can finish the week above there, that's a pretty good sign uh, for QBE. Trend intensity rating is a plus 10 there. So there's two good solid stocks for you at the moment. Uh, BHP is still holding up and QBE is uh, racing ahead pretty, uh, pretty well. Um, okay, so from the trends from last week, well, we looked at 7 Group last week. And it's also one of these bullet trades which is moving ahead pretty strongly. Um, it has done since June of 22, and we got cotton onto it around here somewhere um, in, back in December, and since it's killed it again, running up to the highs at about 24.50. So it's looking good. Trend intensity running is 10. There's good volume here, clearly, and great momentum here. It's above the average, the high highs, high lows. It's all there. Uh, and this is a situation where we look at what we've got, the rules that we have. We don't need to look outside these rules because that will just distract it from our game. And uh, so there's all sorts of things we can worry about, but the game is looking at your objective and your trade plan and your rules, and that's what you look at. And you don't worry about any other, th other things, you just monitor those things, and if the stop goes off, you get out, if the trend goes up, you keep lifting your stop, and that's what we're going to do. So 7 Group Holdings um, has had a good, uh, a good uh, recovery, and is looking pretty good at the moment. Um, the other one we looked at last week, which is another one which is just, you know, holding there. It's sort of developing this resistance area here up around uh, 16 just above $16. It's just holding there. You know, a bit of selling came in and it just came back a bit, but the buyers came straight back in. This is getting back towards neutral, so we're getting into this turning situation for, for Sims. It's still trend intensity rating there of minus three, uh, but it is showing all the right signs uh, of a turn. We've had a big, a big, uh, big uh, fall back here as we saw um, since earlier 22. Okay, so that's Sims Group, which is uh, not looking too bad. And a couple of stocks I want to talk about is Ansel and a &M. Now, we saw a bit of a, um, a big a kickback from Ansel uh, the last couple of weeks. It had a really bad one last week, but it did recover and actually finished uh, above our stop this week. So I've highlighted our stop here today, and you can see what's happened here. So it's really a situation. It probably looks a little bit bad, a bit of better selling there, but it is holding above the stop. So I still am patient. Uh, the recovery last week was good. So I'm still hoping these buyers might come back in and save this one because uh, this is a pretty good turn here. It may not go this time. If the stop goes off, we'll chop out. But we'll wait until this week finishes and see what happens. Um, uh, and that's going to tell us what it is. Trend intensity rating has come a bit back, back a bit, <laughs> back a bit to plus six. Okay, so that's Ansel uh, again, one that did recover. It looked pretty bad during the week last week, but it got back in. And a similar situation we've got with A2 Milk this week is that um, it has also um, been smacked about by a good report, but people sort of didn't like it, or, or sort of better buy the rumour sell effect type thing, I think, because. It actually has performed very well, A2 Milk. So it did have a big of a sell-off this week. It has recovered to a our stop area, which we're watching at the moment. So it's a matter of where it finishes at the end of the week that will tell us what to do. Trend intensity rating was plus 9 last week. It was looking all looking good, but all of a sudden these sellers are hit. So now over to you, buyers. See if you can hold this one back up. And um, we still can maybe continue this run above 720, which is the resistance area there, or big, quite a big resistance area there uh, for us. Um, Okay, so that's A2 milk. So, you know, we don't want to throw out the baby with the bathwater sometimes. We just hold our fire, wait till the end of the week, see what happens. And, uh, you know, if the stop goes off, it goes off. If it doesn't, we hang in there. So both Ansel and A2 milk possibly may, may recover. We'll wait and see. 
Okay, the next one I want to go on is to Domino's, which has had a terrible time this week. Um, but, you know, we've been watching this one for a while, and, you know, I think I've been talking about patience as a virtue in this situation. We just wait until the signal comes. We certainly look like we've got a, a bottoming process here uh, happening. It's down 68%. All the signs here, we've got good volume down at the lows. So it's all showing those good signs, but we just really need that a big in the bottoming phase to complete itself and we're now getting a really clear resistance area around here uh, that may trigger a trend reversal um, when, it, when it happens, if it happens. So uh, for the moment we're going through a little bit of a change in here, a little bit of a shock, um, but we'll just have to wait uh, a little bit longer uh, for dominoes. The trend intensity rate is minus four, it'll probably kick down a bit next week. Um, so you know we just have to sort of, um, now we just, the dominoes has come back so we wait basically. Um, and see what happens there. Okay, the other one we look at is NH, NIB Holdings, which is just sitting up there at those highs. Um, you know, it's uh, it's all, all the hallmarks of a, of a continuation of the trend are there, but it's a bit like the ASX 200. All is looking good, but we have a big resistance area there, and NHF clearly does it $8. So, but we've got this sort of lo high lows here. We've got some really good volume, which has pushed this rally for the, the last part. The momentum is positive. It's above the average. So dip down this week. So again, we're going to have to wait until um, the market settles down because we get these one-day kicks which are really nasty sometimes, but um, we'll just have to, um, you know, play, play it as it comes. You know, this resistance may hold, and it may come back into a big correction again back to S2. Who knows? But for the moment, it doesn't look too bad. We'll wait and see what happens at the end of the week and see where we are. We're not in the stock at the moment. We're neutral, so it doesn't really neither here nor there as to what actually happens with the uh, with this stock. So that's NHF Holdings. Um, okay. Um, so breakout candidates maybe this week, a couple of goodies I might have a look at for you. Um, firstly, we're looking at uh, NEC, which has been out of favour for a while. Uh, we had a big top up here, but now we're getting a big bottom down here, a big accumulation pattern seems to be occurring. Let me just show you who we are, 9 Entertainment. Trend intensity rate is minus 3. It's starting to waft around the average a bit. The volume's a little bit indifferent. Um, momentum is recovering, so it's really just in an early stage of reversal. But I think if we can get through here, it will trigger um, a qualifying trend intensity rating. I'm not 100% sure, but I think it probably will. And if it does, um, then that could be quite a good little bottoming pattern, good base for it to lever a rally towards those highs for nine minutes of time. And so that's one for you to watch. It may not be imminent, but it's it's close. So we'll just uh, um, we'll just keep an eye on this one for the next couple of weeks. Okay, Aurorica is another one, which we had a shot at a while ago, it failed, came back, <coughs> took our medicine, got out, waited for the rest of this uh, thing to develop, so we've now got, <coughs> excuse me, high-low occurring here, and we've got some resistance up here, that's really the trend reversal level now, the high-lows here, we've got some reasonable volume here down at the lows, which is a good sign, and this was now recovering above zero. Um, so, Aurorica trend intensity rating plus one, so it's neutral at the moment, but it's, uh, it's certainly one that um, it's come down from a, a long way and it's been a while since we've seen this subtrend. So this whole pattern here above a big cycle low is a really good accumulation pattern uh, to put below any trend that might develop out of this sort of area here. Okay, so keep an eye on Orica. Okay, just a couple of little ones for you this week. Um, I looked at AUB back in December this year and it's actually recovered pretty well. Just as it was filling around about here, November, December, <coughs> we looked at it, and it looked pretty pretty positive uh, for a reversal here, good reversal price action. Uh, some selling hit the market, but the buyers came straight back in, momentum kicked up. So we've got that alignment of the stars there, <coughs> which kept AUB through there, and had a couple of weeks, like often it happens. Um, we have to be patient through these times, but now it's swing high, and now it may even be looking to make a new high. So. We looked at the stock when it was about 23 bucks, so it's now up around 27 and still looking very interesting to me at the moment. So um, AUB Group is one to watch. And if you want to play the uh, the, flight, <laughs> the travel game uh, at your own peril maybe, but we just had one stock come in uh, a couple of weeks ago. Um, flight centres lifting on, on uh, good volume at the moment and we know Qantas is doing really well. And this is a smaller stock that I don't normally cover. It's outside my 162, but Hello World um, it's got a big sort of basing pattern down around here, some very good support down here at S1. And now it's starting to move above here, and this is the area that we're looking at up around 290. So a little bit of way off this one. Trend intensity rating is still minus three, but certainly looking interesting with the volume patterns down here and this momentum looking up here. So 
you know, if we, again, a bit like the, um, what I was looking at with Orica there, if you can put this big base behind it and leverage a good rally from here, then that's a pretty good sign um, for Hello World that we might see a, a change in fortunes there because it has come down from the fairway and our one's up around six dollars there so hello world again is another one worth watching for you so there's a few stocks for you today hope it gives you an idea there's plenty of action there try not to worry too much about the market if stocks go off stops go off we get out and we just wait um, but if there's uptrends happening there which there are if you said with Boral, QBE, Super Retail Group, all those stocks, all working in that you know that ASX 200 area, which is a relative safety area for me because it's a lower risk area. So I'm always trying to cut those corners of risk uh, with what I do, and working in this environment is a good way because the the, the downside risks aren't as great as at the smaller end, and they still have good uh, good rallies as we as we have seen. So. Uh, there are a swag of other opportunities coming up on stock radar scans right now. So this is just a couple, couple of examples for you to have a look at. Okay, so now let's just go to, um, just want to talk about the bullet trade thing. Uh, it's really just, what, what I'm really talking about is there are stocks that take off and at the moment, as I said before, the, the, the ASX 200 is resistant, so we worry, 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 but there are stocks moving ahead. So bullet trades, there's plenty out there, okay? Not just the ones that I've mentioned, but some of those ones in the top 10 I showed you before. And again, even during the reporting season, it is the more often than not model. So we've seen things like A2M and Ansel perhaps suffer a bit under profit reports, but we've got lots of other, other good stocks in there. So as long as we've got more good stocks than bad stocks, that's what we're all about. Okay, so we actually discussed this a little bit more in the newsletter this week, which will be out next week, uh, usually at the end of the month, so it's the 23rd today, so another five days. We discussed the probability radar more extensively in next week's radar newsletter, why it works, how it works, and how to capitalise on it. Okay, so that's uh, for next week's newsletter. Um, so what, what's it all about? Well, it's really about, again, this more often than not thing. So you won't get it right all the time, but if we deal with each, pro each trade appropriately, we will and keep the, the losses small on our trades and try and run our profits, and that's where we, uh, we make our money on those big profits. So work those probability odds, which is what I try and do, but you've got to be consistent in the approach to allow the probabilities to work. So unlike a casino, we're, if, we're, if we're, in, we're in control, if we're smart, we've got to control what we do if we do that. Um, things will work out okay. So some stops we will lift to maximise profits and some get triggered to cut losses and that's the, that's the game. So we play that game with commitment and that's what we, uh, that's, that's all we really do. Okay. And if you do that consistently then you'll find that uh, you will make, make some pretty good money. Okay, so that's about all I've got for you today. Um, Yes, yeah, so newsletter next week uh, with a discussion on probabilities radar. We also have a member who's kindly contributed an article for us this week on the bucket system, which I briefly mentioned in the newsletter last week. So he's actually the guy that I was talking to about all this sort of side, and he'll explain it in quite, quite succinctly in the radar's rant this week uh, in the, the newsletter. And in the, in the micro view, my sector review, I'll be covering consumer staple stocks this week. So, And there's some interesting things happening in those uh, consumer staple stocks. Okay, so that's about all we've got for you today. Um, the market's been great. There's plenty of money to be made out there. We're talking about bull trades today. Reporting season gets wilder and wilder, and that's maybe so, but there are still a the same number of winners and losers out there. So the volatility scares us, but that's an emotion, so we need to put them aside, and uh, if we do that, the gains can be rewarding. Okay, so good luck with your trading this week. Stay safe. Watch your trends. Heed your stops. Give me a call if you need any help, and I'm happy to have a chat with you. Uh, and I'll see you all again next week for next week's insights. Thanks very much.